Tonight is going to change somebody's life. On Wednesday, as I was walking out through the door, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me, I'm bringing the ark of my covenant and my presence here tonight like you've never seen it before. So I'm in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter number 1 and verse 6. I want you to hear how Paul, the apostle, was writing something so powerful to Timothy. The power of God is about to hit people all around the world. There's a whole lot of people watching us tonight all over the world in South Africa, in Nigeria, in the Singapore. In fact, we have people watching in United Arab Emirates that constantly join our services uh, via the social media. And I want you to share the video, connect with your friends, and let the glory of God hit you. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, he says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands. I put it in remembrance. I'm asking you, uh, Timothy, to remember to stay off the gift of God that you have received by the putting on or the laying on of my hands. Tonight, the Holy Spirit will have me talk to you on what I call activate. I want you to turn to somebody and say activate. Now, you're talking to the wrong person. Find somebody with faith in them and say, activate. Okay, tell somebody, say, tonight, God is calling you <laughs> to activate your anointing. Activate your destiny. Activate your power. Activate your, your glory. Activate the gift of God that's inside of you. Let me hear you say, yes, Lord. Many people have still not grasped the importance of the anointing. A lot of pastors still don't understand the importance of the anointing. What is the importance of of the anointing. How significant is the anointing of God in your life? Let me tell you something tonight. The anointing is everything. The anointing is the alpha and the omega of your destiny. The anointing is everything that makes your life in God to work. Oftentimes when people hear the supernatural, it almost becomes a cliche in the church. It almost becomes a slogan. The supernatural almost becomes in itself another denomination. And, and it is very pathetic because the supernatural is the fundamental for every Christian believer. In other words, you cannot be a lion and not roar. It is in the DNA of lions to roar. You cannot be a fish and not swim. You cannot be an elephant and not be humongous. You have to be large. You cannot be a Christian believer and not engage in the supernatural. The supernatural is not meant to be the exception. The supernatural is the norm. It is norm for you as a Christian believer to engage the power and the glory of God. God, I wish somebody would hear me tonight. That is the norm. It is normal for the eyes of the blind to open when the Holy Ghost is working. It is normal for the lame to walk. It is normal for sicknesses and diseases to be healed. It is normal for Christians to walk in the glory of God. When that's not happening, then something is wrong. When that's not taking place, something is wrong. When the anointing is not moving, then something is wrong. If you are in an environment and the glory of God is not present, then something is wrong. If you are in an environment and you are not experiencing miracle money, I'm talking to somebody right now. Miracle what? Miracle opportunities. 
miracle breakthroughs, miracle finances, miracle provision, miracle favor. If you are not experiencing supernatural joy, unspeakable joy, supernatural peace, then something is wrong. And I'm going to tell you what is wrong. The devil is busy stealing what belongs to God's people. The devil has stolen too much too long from the church but the spirit of God says I am bringing back the awareness of my people so they can understand that everything that I have created for them the blessing the increase the favor that I've made for them to enjoy is all embedded in the supernatural God will not come down to our level. God will not condescend into the earth realm. We have to ascend to his level. I want you to lift your hands and say, I connect to the supernatural. We have to understand that there is in fact a deposit of the anointing in every Christian believer. There is a deposit. I want you to hear me tonight. There is a measure of the anointing in every child of God. Some people have the anointing on the ankle level. When you read the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 and 47, you will understand what I'm talking about. Some people have a measure of the anointing on the ankle level. Some people have a measure of the anointing on the kneel level some people have a measure of the anointing on the waistline level some people have a measure of the anointing of the overflow yeah. am i talking to somebody right now there are measures of the anointing the bible says god has given the holy ghost unto jesus christ of nazareth without measure you see the measure of the anointing that you have not yet entered, you cannot explain. All right. Because it is not by explanation, it is by experience. Okay. You thought you've seen everything, but God says, I'm about to open you up to a whole new level in this season. How many people did God send me to here tonight? The, the, the Bible says, I, I, I call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things. Great and mighty things. So there is a, always a higher realm of the anointed. Listen to me, somebody deny. There's a realm of the anointed you're about to enter into. Before you ask God for something, it will be done. There's another realm of the anointing where you don't even speak. Your thought becomes an expression of supernatural oil, supernatural unction. My God, I'm talking to somebody tonight. There are certain people who are asking God to shut the devil down. That's a realm of the anointing. But there are some people who are looking for the devil. Who are saying, oh my God, I heard the devil is somewhere. I'm looking for the devil. I want to, I want to mess up his life. There are some people that are running from the devil. Some people, the devil is running from them. Okay, you didn't hear me, somebody. A measure, tell somebody, a measure of the anointing. There are some people who are saying God is my God. And there are some people that God in heaven is saying I am their God. Some people are calling God and say, God, be my God. And God is saying to others, I am his God. Do you know how God said, I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. In other words, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of this patriarch of faith, they have entered into a realm in God. A realm that God is not ashamed to be called their God. Oh, am, am I talking to somebody right now? A realm of prosperity, a realm of favor. God is about to take you higher to a realm of his power and glory that you've never seen before. I came here tonight to prophesy over somebody that you are living the elementary level of your faith. You are living the ankle level. You are living the bless me level until you become a blessing. My God, you are not only going to be blessed, but you are going to be 
the blessing. You are going to be the extension of the power of God. You are going to be walking in favor that you've never seen. You are entering a level of the anointed that you are going, my God, to begin to live in houses you did not buy. You are going to enter a realm of the anointed that sickness and disease can never ever come near your life. Am I talking to somebody right now? You are entering the realm of the anointed that you will no more be the employed, but you will be the employer. There's an anointing for everything. The anointing is the empowerment of God for everything. When you go in the book of Isaiah chapter 11, you begin to see how the Bible says, a rod shall shoot out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. And the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord will come upon him. And the spirit of the Lord speaks of the anointed. The Bible says, number one, he shall make him the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of counsel, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of might, different dimensions of the anointed. There is an anointing for money. Okay, I don't know who you are today, but I sense in my spirit that there are a hundred people in this building tonight that the anointing for money is about to come on their life. And some of you are saying, Apostle, what are you talking about? The Bible says in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18, Thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee power, empowerment, the anointing to get wealth. Somebody is here tonight. If your faith can handle this, God says there is an anointing for prosperity, an anointing that's coming on your life in this season that you are going to begin, hallelujah, to enter the realm of finances and favor that you've never entered before are you ready for the anointing we got to be ready with the anointing we got to be ready we got to be ready we got to be ready we got to be conscious of the supernatural you got to live in the reality in the consciousness of the supernatural you got to embrace the revelation of the supernatural you have to wake up every morning and say to yourself today I'm above the natural I cannot have natural money I cannot have natural nothing in my life can be ordinary it has to be extraordinary supernatural because I carry the anointing I want you to understand something today. It doesn't matter the, the realm of the anointing that you carry. The devil wants that anointing to be dormant. It is possible to be anointed and still powerless. I want you to look in my eyes tonight. It is possible to be anointed and still broke. It's possible to be anointed and still sick. It's possible to be anointed and still afflicted by demon spirit David said this day I'm anointed a king yet weak he was anointed the king of Israel at that season yet weak how is it that we could carry such incredible anointing on our lives no matter what realm or dimension of the anointing that you're carrying on your life and still the events of our lives does not ne necessarily manifest the reality of that anointing I want you to hear me somebody one of the strategy of the devil is to disconnect you from the flow of the glory by making the anointing that's on your life to be shallow lift your hands say father, father. I can hear you say it again say father, father. every shallow, every shallow. Anointing, anointing on my life, on my life. is turned yes, into depth yes. say I'm going deeper, I'm going deeper. into the oil and the revelation of the power of God I want to see the manifestation of the glory and the depth of the anointing the enemy wants the anointing on your life to be redundant that's what he wants you to do many believers are carrying on their lives the anointing of God a lot have not still caught the revelation of the anointing. But many have caught the revelation of the anointing. And that anointing that's on their lives is not active. It's not blessing them. It's not blessing anybody. The anointing in their lives is not impactful. 
the anointing on their lives is not fruitful. And that's why Paul told Timothy, he said, Timothy, you got to remember, remember to stir up the gift of God, listen to this, that is in you. Where's the, where's the gift? Now, the word gift comes from the word charisma, which means the anointing, the gift of God. Stir up the gift of God that is in you, which you have received by the laying on of my hands. Paul said, Timothy, stir up. Now, the NIV version says, fan the flames. Fan the flames of the gift that you have received that's resident in you. This anointing is not about to come on you. The anointing is already in you. But the anointing is not yet active. Okay, am I talking to somebody right now? I want you to lift your right hand. You know how I love to be a responsive preacher? Because I believe there is power in proclamation. They overcame by the word of the of the by the word of their mouth and by the blood by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. I want you to say with me, say right now, I declare and decree the anointing on my life to come alive. You can be anointed and still not functional. He says, stay up, stay, bring to life, stay up. Fan the flames of the anointing that is in you, which you have received by the laying on of my hands. Bring it to life. Fan the flames of the anointing. Fan the flames of the anointing. There is an anointing in you right now. Fan the flames of the anointing. Bring it to life. It is not sufficient to be anointed. You have to stir your anointing. You have to bring it to life. You have to put the oil on fire. You know sometimes during the winter or some kind of oil, when you put it on the store too long, it starts to get all frozen. And you can't do nothing with it. Stir off the anointing. Fan the flames of the anointing. That's on your inside. There's an anointing for money on your life. Stir it up. There's an anointing for healing on your life. Stir it up. There's an anointing for prophecy on your life. Stir it up. There's an anointing for increase and favor on your life. Stir it up. Look at my eyes and I stare up that gift. Stare up. Holy Ghost, breathe word upon this, this phrase right now. Stare it up. Stare, I'm going to stay on this one until it hits your spirit. Stare up your anointing. Stare up your anointing. Bring your anointing to the surface. Bring your anointing to manifestation. Bring your oil out. Don't hide your weapons don't hide your glory do not hide your power don't hide your identity don't hide who you are stir up stir up stir up the glory stir up the God that's living inside of you. Stir up the anointing that's inside of you. Bring it out. My God, who am I preaching to? The devil is a liar. Stir up the anointing that's inside of you. Uh, what is God saying tonight? He says, the anointing in you is not going to change the world. It's the anointing you stir up that will impact people. Uh, Paul told Timothy, remember, remember to get that anointing out of the shop. Remember to cultivate the gift that's inside of you. Stay up your anointing. Stay up your power. Stay up your ministry. Stay up your glory. Stay up your potential. Stay up. My God, who am I preaching to tonight? 
everything that's trying to keep you anointed hidden everything that's trying to hide your potential everything that's trying to hide the glory of God that's in you is not of the father everything that represents fear everything that represents shame is not from God it does not matter where you're coming from stay up your gift it doesn't matter what people think about you. It doesn't matter what mistakes you've made. God says right now, today, stay up, you keep my God. It doesn't matter who is not watching or who is watching. It doesn't matter who believes in you or who does not believe in you. Stay up, you keep. It doesn't matter how many times you've fallen. Stay up, you keep. Holy Ghost is here tonight. Bring it to life. Bring your anointed up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. God is calling somebody to stand up. How can we be anointed yet so powerless? How can we be anointed yet demons are running rampage? How can we be anointed yet we can't sleep at night? How can we be anointed yet depressed? How can we be anointed yet feeling low? My the devil is a liar the anointing is on your belly and the Holy Ghost says stay up your anointing I need a hundred Christians here tonight if they can stay up the power of God that's inside of them my God I wish 100 believers in this building tonight can stay up the power of God. Please sit down for one minute. There is something about staring up the power of God that's inside of you. There's something about staring up the anointing of God that's inside of you. It changes the game. David said the day that I called upon the Lord, then my enemies were turned back. So he said, I've been running from the enemy. I've been, I've been hiding from the opposition that's been coming against me. But, but the day that I stir up my anointing and I choose to call upon God, that is the day that my enemies will turn back. So when I stir up my anointing, the things that is chasing me, the things I'm running away from, I turn back and I say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm powerful. Wait a minute, I'm going to stir up my anointing. Wait a minute, I'm going to take my weapon and stir up my power. And look in the eye of the mountain and say mountain you were dealing with me now you're gonna deal with my anointing tell every devil in the pit of hell now you're gonna deal with my anointing tell every sorcerer you're gonna deal with my anointing I'm staring up my anointing in 2018 I'm bringing to life the anointing that's inside my belly deep color to deep hey deep color to deep the bible says i'm a man of peace i look okay i look calm on the outside i'm a man of peace when you look at me on the on the outside i look ordinary i'm a man of peace but when i speak they are for war when i open my mouth and call upon god something will happen something will change the devil is a liar when i open my mouth and call upon god miracles will happen when i open my mouth stay on I'm staring my gift. I'm staring my power. The devil has a tendency to underrate you. He has a tendency to look at you in the arm of the flesh. The Bible says Goliath looked at David and said, "Who are you? Do you think I'm a dog that you come at me with sticks?" But David said, you, you, you come against me with spears and arrows. But I come against you in the anointing. 
I'm staring my gift right now. I'm staring my glory. You need no permission to stare your anointed. You need no apologies to stay your gift. This is your year. God is saying that I'm going to announce to somebody until your spirit get it tonight. That there is an anointing on the inside of you. That God is calling you to heal the sick. Oh my God, who am I talking to? That God is calling you to raise the dead. The hand of God is upon your life. God is calling you to work miracles. God is calling you to be a game changer, a line crosser, a limit breaker. I'm bigger than this. Hallelujah. The spirit of a God says you are bigger than this on the on the on the inside. It doesn't matter how tired you look on the outside. But it's time to stay up the anointed. The Bible says when the Amalekites came to David and they took everything he had. And the Bible says David was tired and men were crying. But they came to a point, the scripture says, they inquired of God. And David said, God, what shall I do? Shall I pursue them? Shall I overtake? Will I recover all? And the Bible says, David ah, pursued him. Number one, before he pursued, he encouraged himself in the Lord. Ah, he, I'm, I'm talking to somebody tonight. The Spirit of God told me to come here and tell you to encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. Encourage, wake up the giant inside of you. Encourage yourself. I know. Listen to me. Listen to me. Hey, Some of you think, some of you think that things get better on its own. You think life will suddenly switch and the people that hate you will suddenly start to like you on their own. Everything that moves, somebody's moving it. Everything that stands, somebody's holding it. And until you get up and say to yourself, enough is enough. I gotta stay up the anointing that's on my life. Enough of this shame. Enough of this ridicule. Enough of this darkness. I'm staring up my, my calling. I'm staring up my glory. I'm coming out by the power of God. Stare up. Now I want you to look in that scripture and I want you to see how Paul did not tell David I mean Timothy and said Timothy let God stir up your anointing no I don't want you to get it twisted he didn't say Timothy let God stir up your anointing God has already anointed you okay every time that there's a miracle God has his part to play. And you have your part to play. Uh, the spirit of religion makes people to think God is going to do everything. Uh, but when you work in covenant relationship with God. And you begin to understand that you do your part. And God will do his part. Okay. So the part of God is to anoint you. And he has already anointed you. Uh, the Bible says you have received an anointing from the Holy One. Am I talking to somebody tonight? So David said in Psalm 23, he said, He anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. So he's already anointed you. But that anointing that God gave you is lying fallow on the inside of you. It is not God's job to stay up your anointing. It is your work to wake up and say, I've had enough. I'm going to call on the anointed. That's all my life. How many people are anointed here tonight? How many people here know that the anointing of God is on their lives? Is there somebody in the building tonight that wants to stay up the anointed? I'm 
I'm not sitting down here crying anymore. I'm not sitting down here languishing anymore. I'm not sitting out here in pain anymore. I'm not going to have the devil take my money. I'm not going to let the devil take my joy. I'm staring up. The Lord told me to come to Tremona and to tell God's people to stay up the anointing. The call of my life is to wake up the sleeping giant. To say to every child of God that's feeling down, feeling low, you are better than that. You are greater than that. You are bigger than that. Get out of your seat and say to the devil, back out. Back out. If God be for us, who can be against us? So we are waiting for God Why God is waiting for us. God is saying when you're ready, you're going to stir up your anointing. When you're ready, you're going to begin to speak life over that dead child. That dead situation. That crazy situation. Every nightmare, you begin to get up and say, the devil is a liar. He's a liar. Enough is enough. I'm going to stir up my anointing. I'm going to call forth my miracles. I'm going to stir it up. Some, tell somebody besides you, I'm stirring up. Why are you always talking to the wrong person? Look for somebody with faith attitude on them and say, I'm staring up. The anointing that's on my life. I'm not waiting for things to change. I'm changing things. If that's you, see, I'm not waiting for things to change. I'm changing things. I'm bringing heaven to my situation. I'm bringing the glory of God into every circumstance around me. I'm bringing God down. I'm announcing my glory. I'm telling the earth to hear me and the heavens to agree to me that a child of God has emerged. Uh, you're not hearing me, somebody. I'm telling every devil in the pit of hell, give way now. A winner is coming. A star is born. I'm anointed for this. Please sit down for a few minutes. So Satan is, does not care how much anointing you carry. The devil is afraid when you begin to stir up your anointing. That's what moves the pit of hell. When you get out of your seat and you say, no, 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 no. I'm stirring up my anointing. That's what moves the, 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 the kingdom of darkness. And in the church today, there's too much talk that lacks power. Am I talking to somebody right now? There's too much talk. There's too much confession that lacks performance. There's too much, we're going to do this, we're going to be that, that lacks productivity. Okay. So the Bible says that the children of Israel... The word of the Lord says when the ark of the Lord got to the camp of Israel, they began to shout, but still they were defeated in battle. Why? Because what they had was a box that had no correlation with covenant. If you continue to shout and don't stay up your gift, you see that things are still not going to come together. A lot of people go to church and all they do is to, you know, I receive this and I receive that, but yet they are not activating the anointing. Because they don't know that there is a formula to stir up your anointing. How do you stir up your anointing? Because a whole lot of people don't get it. I want to stir up my anointing. But how do I stir up my anointing? When Paul told Timothy, stir up your anointing. What was Paul telling Timothy? Number one, he was telling him to engage the force of prayer. Let me hear somebody say prayer. prayer. It does not matter how the upgrade the anointing on your life is. Let me say something to you tonight. If you don't understand how to engage the force of prayer, you will not be able to stay up your anointing. Prayer is what plugs you into the frequency of the power of God. I, I want you to think of it this way. You have a phone and that phone is a high-end phone. You bought that phone for $3,000. God help you. And that phone just... 
the battery went dead. If the battery of the phone was dead, how useful is that phone for you? Let me ask you a question. The battery of the phone is dead. We have a big problem in the church today, man of God. The problem that we have in the church is that too many people are trying to do the will of God in the arm of the flesh. In the systems of men. And the Bible says, by strength will no man prevail. It is not by might nor by power. It is by the Spirit of God. It is by the Spirit of God. Who are thou great mountain before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain because there will be the shout of grace unto it. Uh, whenever God's hand is laid on you, you can do in one day what will normally take you 10 years to accomplish. I pray God will open the eyes of your understanding and you will know what Jesus said when he, he repeatedly told the disciples in John 15, without me, ye can do nothing. You cannot move an inch without the glory of God, without the presence of God. So if you had a phone and the phone is not plugged, what happens? The, the, the phone is not useful. It's not useful. If you start pictures videos data whatever you stored in the phone the phone is not useful if you were in the center of danger and there's enemies and there's all kinds of bandits all over the place if you had a phone that was dead you might as well throw it away because a dead phone has no relevance in the place of emergency when your life is not plugged to the place of prayer your life is redundant we talk about prayer, but we don't pray. A lot of people do prayer conference, but they will not pray. Some people do 99 principles of prayer, but they will not pray. You see, the only principle of prayer is pray. <laughs> Did you hear me, somebody? What is the only principle of prayer? Just bend your knees and pray. There's, there's just one thing about prayer. Prayer moves mountain. Prayer connects you with God. Stir up the gift. We have a lot of pastors today that would not pray. They're not going to pray. They come to the altar with a prayerless anointing. A prayerless anointing is a powerless anointing. You have no right to stand before men when you have not bent your knees before God. You cannot talk to men about God when you have not talked to God about men. Prayer changes situations. Lord, send prayer power into the church. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and pray and seek my faith. If the church is not praying, we have no power. The anointing is not moving. Prayer. Prayer is the key. Whenever you get so busy to pray, you get to be, to, 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 you, you, you will lose your strength. Nothing works. Nothing moves. You give excuses for not praying. That's the strategy of the enemy. You got to pray. You got to cultivate a prayer life. You have to be a living, moving altar. Your life must be on fire every time. Am I talking to somebody right now? That's the first key that you're going to use to stir up your anointing. So when, when Paul was saying to Timothy, stir up the gift. What Paul was saying to Timothy is, you pray all the time. Let men pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in tongues. Pray in the morning. Pray in the afternoon. Pray at night. The devil can't come near you when you pray. It's not possible for flies to settle on the hot stove. Pray, pray, pray. Be on fire for God. Don't be lukewarm. Be on fire. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray at all times. Set your life on fire. Don't go to a prayerless church. My God, run away from prayerless Christian. Run away from Christian who are using the tactics of men, the strategies of men, and they will not bend their knees and talk to God. The secret of the power of God in this house is a tenacious spirit of prayer. There's no prayer, there's no revival. It's little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. Great prayer, great power. You can't get it wrong. <clears throat> it's a secret to stir up your gift. When your gift is put under the influence of prayer, it becomes refined. Am I talking to somebody right now? 
Whatever God has anointed you to do, if you go in the secret place to pray and you come back, people are going to look at you and prayer will magnify you. Prayer, prayer makes your word to be a law on earth. Who am I talking to? Prayer makes demons to see you and run away. My God, every time that I step in the presence of God and I come back, I shake hands with people and they say, Apostle, I feel fire moving. I said, because I'm coming from the secret place. I'm coming from the place of glory. Who am I talking to tonight? Somebody say, oh, there are witches that gathered in my dream. You start to pray and watch if the witches will come in your dream. They're going to run from you. Like, they know that you are no nonsense. They know the hand of God is on your life. They know the glory of God is on your life. Stay up your gift through prayer. Let me hear you say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Number two. Stay up your gift through worship. Amen. Worship stays up your gift. Worship means that you place your gift, your anointing that God has deposited in you. Worship means you acknowledge the giver and you worship the giver. Am I talking to somebody right now? I know that there is nothing that I have received that I have that I've been given that I have not received. Everything that I have and that I am is yours. Listen to me, somebody. We are in the days that God is no more looking for performance. God is no more looking for people who are going to please other folks or people who are trying to show off. But God is looking in this time for worshipers. The Bible says the Father is seeking for such. I don't care your title. Be a bishop. Be a most reverend doctor. If you are not a worshiper, my God, you are nothing before God. Come on, somebody. You know, worship is the place we come without our title. You can't come as a worshiper and say, God, my name is Pope and I'm ready. No, you, you can't come. When, you, when it comes to worship, you must come with the heart of a worshiper. Okay, you didn't hear me, somebody. Uh, you can minister to people in your title, in your anointing, in your office. But when you minister to God, you must come as a worshiper. You must minister to God as a person. Oh my God, what am I talking to tonight? How many people are ready to say, God, I don't want you to, I don't want you to only minister to me. But I come here tonight to bring my worship before God. Whenever you worship God, the anointing is released. The Bible says when Elisha wanted to worship God, woman of God, Elisha wanted to worship God. He said, get me a psalmist. Get me somebody that can play the harp. And they brought the harp. And as they were playing in the kuka as they started to pray, what happened? The spirit of the Lord came on him. The spirit of prophecy. The gift was on this man of God. The gift of prophecy. But that gift did not move. Until people start to worship God. You, you, you know what I notice? Whenever there is worship in the atmosphere and I get to minister, there's a higher level, higher frequency of the anointed. I'm not moving in my gift alone, but I'm moving in the presence. Much of what we do in the church is only in our expertise. And in our systems, that when worship goes up, there's going to be a release of the tangible presence of God. That's how you stay up your gift. I said you stay up your gift through worship. The Bible says, when the enemy came against Jehoshaphat, the Lord told him to go and assign worshipers. And let the worshipers be at the head in front of the battle. You can imagine the battle procession with the worshippers in front. Am I talking to somebody right now? Every battle you are fighting in your life, if worship can go on, victory will follow the worship. Every time worship goes ahead, victory follows. My God, who am I talking to? Every time, every need in your life. Some of you need to stop asking God for things. You need to stop worshiping God for the things he's about to do. You need to pray, hallelujah, the deposit of your glory ahead and say, God, I'm worshiping you because of the deliverance of my children. 
I'm worshiping you for what is about to happen. Stay up your gift. Stay up your gift. Stay up your gift. Number three. I'm going to stop here tonight. Speak the word of God to yourself. Okay. Look at mine, everybody. This is a powerful kingdom strategy. Look at mine. This is so great. This will change your life. How do you, man of God, speak the word of God to you? How do you speak the word of God to you? How do you speak the word of God to you? David said to himself in the book of Psalms, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the help of my life. Do you understand that half of the book of Psalms is somebody talking to himself? The other half is somebody talking to God. And the other half is somebody talking to the devil. Okay, I want you to hear me. This is the three dimensions of the confession of your faith. The, conf the first confession of your faith is that you talk to who? To God. The second dimension is that you talk to who? To the devil. And the third dimension is that you talk to who? To yourself. If thou shalt say to this mountain, that's warfare. Listen. When you talk to God, that's worship. That's intercession. That's prayer. When you talk to the devil, that's warfare. But when you talk to yourself, that's empowerment. Amen. Thou shalt say to this mountain, who are thou, O great mountain, because the river bed. You shall become a plain. That's warfare. I speak to the mountain. I speak to the enemies. I speak to the devil. I speak to every opposition. I speak to the storm. Be still. That's warfare. And then I talk to God. Father, I worship you. Father, remember your promise. That's worship. That's intercession. But when you talk to yourself, listen, I will lift up my head to the hill. Who is he talking to? Oh, come on, somebody. Who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? Himself. For where cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not suffer my feet to be moved. For he that keepeth me does not sleep, nor what? Slumber. For the Lord is my what? Is, is my keeper. Come on, somebody. He's my strength. He's talking to who? To himself. The day that I call upon God, then my enemies will, come, will, will turn back. This I know that God is for me. Talk to yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, why are you cast down all my soul? Bless the Lord all my soul. And all that is within me. Bless. Okay, there's no bishop here. There's no pastor here. There's no evangelist here. There's no choir here. There's no music here. There's no songs of praise here. There's no, my God. But I've got a word in my spirit. And I'm going to say this word over, my, over myself. Bless God. All my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. All my soul and forget not his benefit. He satisfy your mind with good things. He forgiven your sin. I'm not waiting for you to prophesy to me. I'm prophesying to myself. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. I shall not die but live. He's not talking to somebody. He's talking to himself. 
The death is coming, but I'm looking at this death and say, Mr. Death, I shall not die but live. So declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This anointing that's coming from me is coming to bless me. You have to talk to yourself. Listen to me. Some of you are going to talk your way out of that pit. You're going to keep looking at yourself and say, <laughs> Mr. Man, you are going to win this battle. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody right now? David said, oh Lord, how many I did I rise up against me? Many I did I save my soul. There is no help for him in God. But thou, oh God, I said, shoot for me. You are my glory and the lifter of my head. I'm talking to myself about my future. I'm talking to myself about my victory. I'm talking to myself about my destiny. I'm talking to myself about my, my breakthrough. I'm talking to myself. I'm getting myself ready. And you know the moment I start talking to myself, everything that's lying fallow inside of me begin to come alive. The anointing that's inside of me. I don't care who is talking to you. I don't care what they're saying to you. But the Spirit of God is telling me to tell 100 people here tonight to get up on their feet and talk to themselves. Begin to talk to yourself. Look at my eyes, everybody. Talk to yourself. Look at my eyes. Talk to yourself. You're going to look at yourself, hold your own belly, and say to yourself, I am the head. I'm not the tail. These two shall pass. Say to yourself, say, girl, you are more than this. Girl, you are bigger than this. You are stronger than this. Talk to yourself. You tell somebody, say, say tell somebody tonight. Say tonight. Tell three people, say tonight. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me. You didn't hear me, somebody. Go look for somebody with faith and say, tonight. In the name of Jesus, I'm not talking to you tonight. I'm talking to myself. I'm prophesying over my life. I'm prophesying over my future. I'm calling forth the greatness and the power and the anointing that's inside of me. I'm a millionaire. I'm blessed. I'm anointed, I'm a conqueror, I am greater, I am mighty, I am rich, I am creative, I'm entrepreneur, God is within me, God is walking on the inside of me, I am able. to myself about my future I'm talking to myself hey listen there's not one day that I don't talk to myself there's not one day that I don't look at myself and say hey, 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 hey. get ready get ready to explode get ready get ready the devil is a liar can you talk to yourself tell everybody shut your mouth i want to talk to me right now i'm gonna talk to myself i'm about to talk to myself this is not your business tonight is my business the bible says look at me somebody the bible says the 10 spies that spoke to themselves we are able to go up and take the mountain we are able to possess the land for God is with us who am I talking to tonight I am able to get that job some of you need to start talking to yourself and say I'm beautiful I'm beautiful I'm beautiful I'm beautiful I'm powerful oh yeah 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 you look at yourself that the anointing inside of you rise up rise up rise up let the millionaire in me manifest let the greatness in me manifest. You need to start practicing your greatness with your mirror. 
You need to start looking in your mirror and speaking to the man in the mirror and telling that person, you are not cursed. You are blessed. You are contagious blessing. Everywhere that you go, everywhere you step into, everybody, if I touch you, you are privileged. I am blessed of God. I want you to lift your two hands tonight. And those of you watching at home, I want you to get out of your bed, get out of your sofa, get out of your car, pack the car, and begin to speak live over yourself. And as you speak live, you begin to stir up the gift, stir up the glory, stir up the anointing, stir up your creativity, stir up your power, speak life to yourself, declare the word of God over your spirit. Stay up your gift. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Eat up, Mama Zay.